Doing well in your career but looking to do better? At DBS, we want you to get to where you want to go with part-time postgraduate, evening degrees and professional diploma courses taught by people as successful at what they do as they are at teaching it. Kickstart your career with real-world learning. Apply today at dbs.ie. The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dean Carroll, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Every now and again, I hear of a housewife who uses Johnson's Wax only to polish her floors. Now, I hope you're not like that, because wax can add rich beauty to your home in a hundred other places besides floors. Take your dining room table, say. Rub a little Johnson's wax on it, then polish it. Believe me, you'll say your table has never looked more beautiful. The finish will really glow and sparkle, and the grain of the wood will show up clear and lovely. When you've seen how your table gleams, there are many other things you'll want to polish with Johnson's wax. Your radio, sideboard, leather goods, and Venetian blinds. Johnson's wax gives them all such a wonderful richness such a smooth, mellow luster. And this hard wax finish is so easy to dust. So, by all means, polish your floors with Johnson's Wax, but also use it to beautify and protect the rest of your home. Ask your dealer for Johnson's Taste or Liquid Wax. Nine Wistful Vista today, the topic under discussion is the mail delivery. The head of the household thinks the postal service is beyond reproach, but her husband thinks otherwise. Listen to him expressing his opinion in his shy, quiet way as we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. And furthermore, I tell you, I say they ought to take the post office department out of the civil service. It ain't civil, and they don't give you any service. Oh, I don't know, dearie. I think the mail is very well handled. Oh, you do. Then where's my personal mail? Nothing but bills, bills, bills. We get so many window envelopes, I'm getting to feel like a peeping Tom. <laughs> what do you expect the mailman to do, Pat? Sit down on a curbstone and write you a letter himself about how he got bit by five fox terriers last week? I expect him to bring me some personal mail, that's all. I'm entitled to more mail than I get, and I think they're holding out on me. I'll bet the post office downtown has got a back room jammed full of every personal letter they ever got for me. Ah, oh, nonsense. How about that letter you got from the finance company yesterday? That was about as personal as anybody could get. That's trivial. You know what I'm going to do? No, and I think I'll hide under the bed till you do it. I'm going to write a letter that'll blow the lid off the whole political pork barrel. That's what I'm going to write a letter that'll... <laughs> Where's my fountain pen? In your vest. Where's my vest? At the dry cleaners. Oh. They're sending your pen back by mail. Uh huh. And I'll bet I never get it, too, either. I'll use a pencil. Where's some paper? Oh, here. Dear Harry. Dear who? Harry. Harry Truman. <laughs> I got a complaint to make, Tootsie. I don't horse around with the underlings. I go right to the top. Yeah, but the logical person to complain to is the Postmaster General. Huh? Oh, well. Well, maybe right. I'll change it. Dear Jim. Jim. Farley. Dear Jim. This is to warn you that I've set a trap for your uniform stooges. My personal mail has not been... Oops, I bore down too hard. Broke the pencil. Give me another pencil. Lena always has one. But what kind of a trap did you set, McGee? Ha, 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 You wait and see, blue eyes. <laughs> the mail is due in 15 minutes, and if I don't get a certain letter, I'm going to put a blast on the post office that'll make Hiroshima look like a wealthy surbub. <laughs> <laughs> see if Lena's got an indelible pencil. I'm going to use some blue language. All right, Master. Oh, Lena! Lena! Hot the frost and now the real raw with the brawler, brawler, Joe. Didn't you know, Mr. McGee, that Mr. Farley ain't the postmaster general anymore? I heard he left the Democratic Party and went into politics. 
You've been listening to our conversation, Lena? Well, <laughs> I don't know how a buddy could help it, Mr. McGee. Gosh, you hollered so loud, I ironed five wrinkles into your green shirt. <laughs> but I know how you feel about getting mail. I get the dearest letters from a war veteran. Love letters, Lena? Well, now that I couldn't really say, Mrs. McGee. They're all wrote in the Spanish language, and I can't read Spanish. <laughs> Can't he write English? No, he's a Spanish-American war veteran. <laughs> See, he stayed in Cuba after the war, and he started a gambling joint. A gambling joint? Yes, it's really a chop suey parlor, but he calls it a gambling joint because he's the only one that can't lose. I thought you couldn't read Spanish. Oh, I can't, Mr. McGee. You see, a friend of mine transplants the letters into American farming. Oh. In his last letter, he said when we got married, we could go to the arena and watch the matadors as they fight El Toro. And do you know what that means? El Toro? Yeah. That's the bull, Lena. It must have been. (laughs) (laughs) Because he didn't send me any engagement ring, you know. (laughs) Well, I think I'll learn some Spanish songs and surprise him like, Chickory, chick, chala, chala, chickala, all me, and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, but that's not Spanish, Lena. That's gibberish. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> He's part gibber on his father's side. <laughs> oh, did I show you his picture? I always carry a little snoop shot of him with me here. Oh, but you mean snapshot, Lena. No, this is a snoop shot, Mr. McGee. He didn't know the police were taking it. <laughs> What's that number on his chest for, Lena? Well, he said he just bought a lottery ticket and he didn't want to forget the number. <laughs> oh, you wanted a pencil, Mr. McGee. Here it is. It writes better if you put one arm around it. I took it off a dance program. <laughs> oh, zippity do that. <laughs> Happy little character. Yeah, when she first started here... Hey, it's about time for the mailman. Keep an eye out the window, kiddo. You see, you're expecting a letter, McGee? I sure am. Whom from? Me. You? Yep. I wrote it myself to myself. Oh? Uh-huh. It's a test case. And if that letter ain't delivered in this mail, I got him right where I want him. I'll take the next plane to Washington. Oh, there I... he is, McGee. There's the mailman. Yeah, yeah, look at him. Look at that batch of mail he's leaving next door. And I'll bet half of it is mine. Ha-ha, uh-huh, uh-huh. Here he comes. Here he comes. He stopped. Watch him, baby, watch him. If he throws any letters down the sewer, you'll know who they are. Look. He turned away. He's passing us up. Aha, that does it. I trapped him. Get your hat, Molly. We're going down to post office. All right, dearie, but I don't think you've... Where's my spat? I don't want to give the impression that I'm a nobody. Where's my spat? Oh, I remember. They're right here in the hall. No, McGee, please. Now it has to be... of the orchestra and among my souvenirs.
wait till we get to that post office. I'll read in the riot act in seven languages. I'll take this thing clean up to the Supreme Court. I'll plead the case myself. Well, now, don't forget the old saying, dearie. Huh? The man who acts as his own lawyer has a fool for a client. Don't worry. I know my way around a courtroom. I'll slip five bucks to one of the mastiffs to get the case called early. That way... You don't mean mastiffs, dear. You mean bailiff. I do? I thought a bailiff was something you threw into a stew for flavoring. <laughs> Ah, that's a bay leaf. Oh, now, don't give me that, kiddo. A bay leaf is that extra page in the front of a book where it says, all the coincidental characters in this book are purely. Now, you're thinking of a fly leaf. I am? Well, then what's a mass thief? A mass thief is a big dog. Why, certainly it is, and that's what I said. I'm going to hound them post office guys through the biggest court. And... Oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hello, Pink. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm on my way to the post office, Wimp. Got a little case against them. They've been holding out my personal mail. Say, have you been having any trouble with your mail, Mr. Wimple? Not a bit, Mr. McGee. <laughs> Sweetie Face, that's my big old wife. Mm-hmm. Sweetie Face opens it, reads it, answers it, tears it up, and throws it away. You mean she opens your personal mail? You let her get away with that, Wimp? Yes. I also let the sun rise every morning. <laughs> you mean there's nothing much you can do about it, I suppose. Oh, you're so right, Mrs. McGee. Sweetie Face is a very strong-minded woman. In fact, she's as stubborn as a mule. And the resemblance doesn't end there, either. Look, Wimp, old man, I'm not the type of guy that interferes with another guy's personal life. I'm merely the type of guy that has gone to the mat with matrimony. Always remember this, Wimp. The man of the house has got to be the boss, you see. Am I right, Molly? Absolutely, dearie. I know, but... You've got to have crust if you're going to be the breadwinner, Wimp. Right, Snooky? Right. But baby, It's the guy that puts his foot down that don't get stepped on. So, baby? Check. Not so, baby. Assert yourself, Wimp. Horse flies don't let on the guy that cracks the whip. <laughs> Got a match, Molly, my cigar. <laughs> what do you say about horse flies? I say they don't light on the guy that cracks the whip. <laughs> well, get a match for me, will you, Molly, my cigar? Throw sorry. it away, dear. You're smoking too much. No, I'm not. I've only had about three. Throw it away, dear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, remember what I says, Wimp. It ain't too late to establish yourself as the boss. <laughs> Let Sweetie Face know she's taking orders from you. Mr. McGee, you've done it. You've made me see things in an entirely different light. Well, good for you, Mr. Wimple. What are you going to do? I'm going home and read my bird book. <laughs> Your what? My bird book. <laughs> I used to hide up in the attic and strain my eyes reading it. Now you're just going to defy her and read it wherever you want to. Yes, I am. I'm going to lock myself in the fruit cellar and read it. <laughs> That's an entirely different light down there. You mean I've been wasting my breath on you, Wimp? No, no, you haven't, Mr. McGee. I'm going downtown right now and buy something that will show her who's boss. Heavenly days. You mean a revolver? <laughs> no, a looking glass. <laughs> well, good luck at the post office, Mr. McGee. Goodbye now. <laughs> Mr. Wimple, I guess he's just too naturally modest to assert himself. Yeah, he's so modest he makes people turn their backs while he changes his mind. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, you know something? Yes. The cotton gin was invented by Eli Whitney. No, no. I mean, you know something about this post office business? Well, not very much, dearie. <laughs> I played it once when I was a young girl, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it. No, no. I mean about the government post office. You see, tampering with the mail is a federal offense. And anybody that... Hello, Molly. It... Hello, pal. Out for a walk? Hello, Mr. Wilcox. No, we're not out for a walk, Junior. I'm on my way to the post office to raise a little ruckus. I'm going to start a shakedown among them stamp tramps that'll rattle the windows in the White House. He thinks they're discriminating against him, Mr. Wilcox. All he ever gets is bills and advertising. Look, pal. The United States Postal Service is one of the best organized branches of the government. You'd better have a good case before you barge in with any half-baked accusations. Who's baking half an accusation? <laughs> I got them postcard seekers red-handed. 
I knew they were holding up my mail, so I sent myself a letter, special delivery, and it wasn't delivered. Well, maybe you didn't put a stamp on the letter. I put a stamp on it, all right, boy. A three-center and a special delivery. And what's more, the glue they put on them things shouldn't happen to a human being. <laughs> it tastes like the underside of the last step of the back stairs of a tannery. <laughs> thought it was so bad myself. Oh, oh, of course, I'd never serve it as an hors d'oeuvre at a parent-teacher's meeting, but <laughs> I stamped 62 Christmas cards without meal effects. Well, I can't understand it. The post office goes to all kinds of trouble to deliver my mail. Why, just this morning, I got a letter addressed simply to No Rubbing, No Buffing, Wistful Vista, USA. My goodness, isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's a different problem. Of course, with Johnson's glow coat being so famous all the world over, they didn't have any trouble figuring out where it was supposed to go. Well, uh, if it was over... The real man said he was so familiar with glow coat that he'd bring me a letter that just had a hyphen on it. Oh, now, wait a minute, you. <laughs> that can't... He says that practically every housewife on his route uses Johnson's glow coat. He says the minute a front door opens, he can tell if they use glow coat. Rich or poor, the houses that are bright and shiny and gleaming with hospitality are the ones where glow coat has taken the drudgery out of kitchen scrubbing. Yeah, but what... He said... Uh, my mailman, that is. Mm-hmm. He says his own wife has used glow coat on her kitchen linoleum ever since they were married. And it looks as fresh and colorful as the day they bought it. Uh, and because it dries in 20 minutes or less... Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Waxy. Hey? <laughs> your mailman said all this? Yes. Yeah. Who is your mailman? Oh, didn't you know? My cousin, Big Baggy Wilcox. <laughs> Oh, he got a big kick out of figuring out where to deliver that letter address. No rubbing, no buffing, wistful bits of UFA. By the way, who was it from, Junior? I sent it myself. <laughs> That's why I think you'll get yours, too, eventually. Let me know, will you, pal? So long, now. Yeah. Ah, he's a good boy, McGee. Always working. Yeah. The only time that guy ever lays down on the job is to look under the kitchen table and feel the linoleum. <laughs> it's racing... Re- hey, there's Latrivia. Hi, Latrivia. Well, hello there, McGee. Good day, Molly. Good day, Mr. Mayor. Nice day for a stroll, isn't it? Yes, but I'm not out just for the exercise. I'm inspecting the pavement from Oak Street to 14th. Bad, is it, Your Honor? Yes, yes, rather. One of our city detectives was slightly injured this morning when a squad car hit a stretch of bad pavement. Hmm. Fracture anything, Latrivia? No, no, it threw him off the seat and he got a corner of the racing form in his eye. Oh, wow, that's terrible. On the contrary, he played a hunch in the fifth race and made $35 on a horse named Cobblestone. <laughs> I had an experience like that once myself, Mr. Hill. I tripped on my shoestring at Churchill Downs one year and bet my shirt on an ag named Button Shoes. Did you collect, McGee? No, Mr. Mayor. Stumblebum won the race. <laughs> Tired, Your Honor. I am tired. Been on my feet all day. Well, we're going to the post office right now, Latrib, but we ought to be home in an hour or so. Drop in and throw your barking dogs a bone, yes, huh? Yes, do, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Maybe you could stand a cup of tea, too. Uh, yes, yes, I could drink a cup of tea with relish. <laughs> <laughs> with relish? <laughs> yes. Didn't you ever hear the expression? Well, whatever you like with it, we have it, Your Honor. <laughs> What do you do, uh, mix it right in the teacup or eat it on the side? <laughs> mix what in the cup? The relish. We got some swell pickle lily that Molly's aunt does. <laughs> or if you prefer mustard pickles, we got a fresh bottle of mustard pickles. What are you talking about? I merely oh, said Oh, now, that don't I could... let McGee kid you out of it, Mr. Mayor. No. Ha <laughs> ha, if you want relish in your tea, you can have it. <laughs> I use orange pico and but I... But I didn't say what that do you I... care what people think, Latrib? I knew a guy once that put sugar on sardines. <laughs> Matter of fact, a little pickle lily in your tea might not be a bad idea, might you? I didn't say I picked a lily in my... <laughs> I mean, I didn't ask for any sardines on my pickle <laughs> I was just... Now, please, remar- please, Mr. Mayor. We're not criticizing. When you're our guest, you can have anything you ask for. So I must say that pickles in your orange pico is... I little... don't want any pickles in my pick. Uh, Any time I ask for orange pickles in my pickle oil, you asked me if I wanted a cup of relish, and I said yes, I could drink some with tea. Uh, no, no. You said, would I cup a like a pickled orange? Now, 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 no, no. Take it easy, sire. We're not crowding you. The pickle lily was merely a suggestion. 
Maybe you'd rather have chili sauce. Well, there ain't a good dash of chili Will sauce. Will you and... please be quiet? I never put chili mix in my orange pickle. <laughs> Look, you're the one who suggested sticking the picket chicky in the chicken box. <laughs> the trolley chickens in the pickle. <laughs> Nobody wants any mickle picky in their cup of orange pickle. <laughs> I was just a ticket. A picket chicken. The chicken. The chicken. I was just a it was you! I... I just... <laughs> McGee? Yes? You're going to the post office, you say? Yes, we are, Mr. Mayor. Would you do something for me? Name it, boy. Just name it. Thank you. Will you please go into the dead letter office and wait till I call for you? Why, sure, boy. How soon are you going to pick me up? You should live so long. <laughs> King's men and Polly put the kettle on. Oh, Polly, what do you want? Polly put the kettle on, kettle on, kettle on. Polly put the kettle on and we can have some tea with relish. Polly put the kettle on, kettle on, kettle on. Polly put the kettle on and we can have some tea with brother. Get out the cookies, we're gonna have a treat. I'll sweep the crumbs away, you'll sweep me off my feet. Polly put the kettle on, kettle on, kettle on. Polly put the kettle on and settle down with me. Polly, put the kettle on. 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 Polly, Hot cross bun, hot cross bun, one a penny, two a penny, hot cross bun. Polly put the kettle on, I'll go buy a bun. When the tea is boiling, we'll have fun. Polly put the little kettle on, little kettle on, little kettle on. Polly put the little kettle on, have a little tea for two. Polly put the little kettle on, little kettle on, little kettle on. Polly put the little kettle on, have a little tea. gives me any lip, I'll... You what, Timber Chin? Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Hi, puffy pants. <laughs> Why aren't you on duty at the hospital checking people's temperature and bank accounts? Why don't you mind your own business, Razorback, if you have any, which I doubt very much? And what's all this about the postmaster giving you an argument? McGee's got a complaint to enter, Doctor. Naturally. He's as full of squawks as a truck full of ducks. <laughs> This is a legitimate beef, butcher boy. They haven't been delivering my personal letters, and I can prove it. Your personal letters? Yes. Who are you kidding, you little outcast? You haven't had a letter in 15 years that didn't start out by saying, we regret to call this account to your attention again, but... Well, he's got one coming this time, doctor, that he knows about. You betcha. I knew they were holding up my personal mail, so I sent myself a letter. And what happened? They didn't deliver it. Maybe they can't read the address. Your handwriting looks like it had been dictated to a left-handed baboon while he was skipping rope. Well, he wrote this letter on the typewriter, Doctor, and it has a new ribbon on it, too. I put it on last Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. You can't talk me out of this rap sleeping pill. I got him dead to rights this time. Well, good luck with it, chipmunk. Uh, incidentally, you'll find an extra $5 added to your bill this month. Want to know what it's for? Oh, not particularly, Doctor. You've never charged us as much as you should have. The heck he hasn't. He's as high-handed as a third-grade school kid that wants to leave the room. <laughs> How about the time I had 
that light case of pneumonia. How about that? Twenty-five bucks, he chokes me. Well, what do you think I'm in business for? Your help? <laughs> what was the extra... What was the extra five dollars for, Doctor? Just as a matter of curiosity. Easter seals, my dear. The National Society for Crippled Children and Adults. Chicago 3, Illinois. I like that organization. To help a crippled child or adult, they make only one condition. That the help is needed. That's all. They don't ask your race or creed or age. Germs and accidents don't consider those things either. No, I should say they don't. Well, I hope you get along all right with the postmaster, McGee. Not a bad fellow. Till you get to know him. So long, Molly. Bye, Doctor. So long, guys. Come on, dearie, let's get this thing settled, or have you gotten over your man? No, sir. I'm the type of guy that can hold a grudge long after I forgot what it was all about. I'm the type of guy... That... Hey, where's the postmaster's office? Well, could it be this door right here, the one that says postmaster on it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it could be. Come on. Hi, bud. You the high muckamuck in this marble waste basket? <laughs> well, I, uh, am the postmaster, if that's what you mean, sir. Good. You better sit down, Si. You got a shock coming. Really? May I ask who you are? My name is McGee, Fipper McGee, and this is my wife, Mrs. McGee. How do you do, I'm sure? How do you do? What can I do for you, Mr. McGee? You can deliver my mail, bud. That's simple enough, ain't it? You haven't been getting your mail? Just bills, Mr. Postmaster, and now and then a blotter from a Mr. Davis, an insurance man. <laughs> now get this, brother. I'm entitled to some personal mail once in a while, and I want to get it, see? Well, I'm sure, Mr. McGee, that you get any mail addressed to you. We have a very... No, I don't get any mail that's addressed to me. I tested you out. I set a trap for you. I mailed myself a special delivery yesterday, and it was never delivered. Now, take a deep breath and explain that, will you? Well, I don't understand it myself, Mr. McGee. If you mailed a special delivery, it should Are certainly... Are you sure you dropped it in the box, McGee? Look in your overcoat pocket. Certainly I dropped it in the box. My gosh, you can see the box from this window here. I drove all the way downtown last night to mail it right here at the post well, office. Well, the, the box beside the steps there, Mr. McGee? Well, that box is emptied every half hour. No, 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 not that box. The one down on the corner there. You see it with the tilting lid? <laughs> I see. The one that says, deposit trash, here. Yeah, that's the one, and that. Huh? Oh. Huh? Oh, oh. Oh. Well, I'm willing to skip it this time, bud, and give you guys one more chance. But if I don't get any mail letter tomorrow... Liver and Molly return in just a moment. What part of your home attracts the most dirt? Isn't it your kitchen floor? Every time you have it looking nice, the delivery boy tracks it up or you spill something or the children bring in mud. But if you know the secret, it's really quite easy to have a kitchen floor that's clean and shining all the time, even in winter. Just get some Johnson self-polishing glow coat. In no time, you'll have a kitchen floor that's really bright. There's no rubbing or buffing with glow coat. Just spread it around on the linoleum and let it dry. Then come back in 20 minutes to find your floor wax polished and gleaming and all oh, so smooth and even. Next time someone tracks in mud or you spill something, just wipe the glow-coated floor with a damp cloth and it'll be as clean and nice-looking as ever. And it's such a comfort to know that your linoleum is protected. In fact, with regular glow coat care, it will keep its gay colors and newness years longer. Try it, won't you? Ask for Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, the floor finish that gives a brighter shine. Who are you writing to now, dearie? Postmaster, apologizing. Good for you. No, oh, I'm not stubborn. When I'm wrong, I admit it, in black and white. Well, I'm proud of you. Sign it and I'll mail it myself. Okay. How do you spell anonymous? Anonymous. Well, you don't think I'm going to sign my own name to this thing? My gosh. I'm liable to have a beef with those guys anytime. Oh. Good night. Good night, all. NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is Chicago, WMAQ.